The Best Thing You've Seen a Gang Do, Viewer Edition. Story 1. My mom's brother David was in a motorcycle club, and I've got two stories related to him. Many years ago, he had to veer off the road to avoid a collision with a sedan that cut him off. He suffered a major laceration to his thigh that was bleeding severely, but managed to crawl to a payphone to call 911 for an ambulance. This was impressive because he was mobility impaired due to lifelong complications from polio as well as the leg injury. The hospital he was at was running out of blood, and they were going to lose him if they couldn't get more, because the tear in his femoral artery was just that severe. My mother drove to his motorcycle club's house and told them all what was going on, and she was almost done telling them the hospital needed blood by the time they were all astride their bikes and roaring toward the hospital in formation. At the hospital, there was an entire row of big, burly biker guys giving their absolute maximum limit of blood, even getting in arguments with the staff about wanting to give more despite it being unsafe to give too much at once. Because of the blood the hospital now had, they managed to save David after 21 pints of blood had gone through him from the torn femoral artery. The second story is shorter and bittersweet. David passed away in an incident while trying to refill a propane tank to, unbeknownst to anyone at the time, had a faulty valve. The tank's valve exploded with enough force to throw him against the wall of his workshop slash shed hard enough to cause significant bleeding in his brain, and there was nothing to be done to save him. Come the day of his funeral, and multiple motorcycle clubs across the state and region had come to pay their respects. David had been a longtime advocate of helmet wearing and safety gear while riding, and some riders had stories to tell at his funeral about how his advocacy for wearing their helmet literally saved their life on at least one occasion. A lot of motorcycle clubs are really loyal not just to one another, but their community. Um, for the most part, motorcycle clubs, they're not like ruffians and people who are going to do bad stuff to you. They are there, you know, because they love to bike together and, you know, they like the camaraderie and oftentimes, as I said, their community and they'll do anything to help out and keep people safe. And sometimes that means, you know, not obeying the rules, but... I don't know, if you're not obeying the rules for the betterment of your community, uh, you know, uh, decide whatever you think about that. Story 2. A few years ago, there was a kidnapping in my area, and it was a big local news. The same day the kid's description was given, I went out on my bike to check the common areas near my place, and actually saw the kid locked in a car. I asked a nearby guy in a motorbike for help and explained the situation. Lo and behold, he got an entire biker gang out, surrounded the car with their motorcycles, and then some of them freed the kid and brought him to me. And as this was happening, I also called the police at the same time as the bikers were freeing him. Then then the kidnapper came back, shouting and threatening with a knife, and the bikers pinned him down with ease until the police arrived, and after the whole ordeal was discussed with the police, the biker whom I first asked ended up taking the kid home on his bike with a police biker as an escort, of course. Edit. To the kid's home, obviously, and don't forget that a police with motorbike followed to ensure the kid's safety. Honestly, without the bikers helping, the police would have arrived after the kidnapper already left. And on my own, I would have been rather defenseless against him and his knife, too. See what I mean? You don't mess with the people in the motorcycle club, and you sure as heck don't mess with their community. And kids. A lot of motorcycle clubs are very big on protecting kids, and that's wonderful. So, yeah, I say good on them for taking these things into their own hands. Hey folks, just a quick content warning for this next story. It does have some reference to some attempted uh, S assault, so if you are uncomfortable with that, just skip to the times code that the editor has put on screen to get to the next story. Story 3. I have a local biker gang in my area. I've known most of the people in it since I was little because my dad used to ride and fix motorcycles. Well, one day there was a car slash bike show that I went to with my dad, brother, best friend, and at the time, boyfriend. Well, my boyfriend at the time met the bikers and they told him if he ever hurt me, they would hurt him. Unluckily for my ex, they were serious. I found out my ex was cheating on me and he took me out to dinner to talk. 
Well, that turned to him trying to force himself upon me. We were in a very hidden area of the restaurant. He covered my mouth and punched me in the face twice, which broke my nose, gave me a black eye, and busted my lip, then held me down. Well, this booth happened to be near the men's bathroom, and as I'm trying to claw my way out of his grasp, I hear, I told you we'd hurt you, boy. And the ex got ripped off me and dragged outside by three of the guys. They dragged him out so as not to disturb other people eating and beat him to a pulp, then came back in to check on me and get some ice. They went back outside, gave him some ice, and told him to F off or they'd beat him till he was unrecognizable. Then they called my parents and took me to the doctor on the back of their bike. Story 4. While I was on a mission for my church, I spoke to some other missionaries about an interesting event that happened to them. They lived and worked in a not-so-nice part of town. Violence was everyday practice. They stepped outside their door and two gang members were standing outside. The gang members told them, You guys aren't doing anything today. Go inside. They of course just chuckled and explained that it's basically their job to go out and spread the good word. The gang members replied with, Stuff is going down today and we're going to make sure it doesn't get to you. The missionaries relented and went back inside and told their boss, best term for it, who was frustrated at first, but after they explained it, he understood. Always surprised how God-fearing, even though they may not be churchgoers, gang members can be. Story 5. Just a funny twist. I was garage sailing the other day and came up to a house where two big biker guys had stuff laid out on the driveway. I was the only one there besides them at the time. I looked through the stuff, left, and came back with actually wanting something. I bought a used coat, which was a black and gray striped winter coat with an awesome flying faded skull all over it, and a biker helmet I decorated for Halloween. They even warned me when I was going through a box of stuff in the garage that was also available that better not look through there. There are uh, some shows only for adults. Wasn't threatening, just letting me know what they were. I paid the guys and left on my bicycle. When I told my parents I went to a garage sale of bikers, days later in a car at a parking lot, Dan warned me to be very careful about bikers and should be with them. Then of course he asked me where I got my cool coat. I told him I got it from those bikers. I still wear that coat to this day. I mean, you should be as careful with bikers as you should with, you know, any people that you don't know, strangers and stuff like that. But honestly, when it comes to biker gangs and motorcycle clubs, as long as you're pretty respectful and stuff, for the most part, they're pretty cool people. I've known many people in motorcycle clubs, and they're just a lot of nice folks. Not to say that they all are. Like I said, any strangers... Use some caution and some common sense. Story 6. This is a story a history teacher of mine told the class. He used to teach English in Japan and played in a jazz band as well. At the high school, there was one class that was extremely disrespectful and didn't behave for any teacher. Anyway, one night after a gig, my teacher wanted to get a drink and went looking for a bar. He came across one that seemed to be closed, but he could hear voices inside and decided to check it out. When he entered, the men there, who were Yakuza, looked at him for a moment before one of them came up to meet him. Eventually, they welcomed him in and got talking where my teacher mentioned that he worked at the high school in town. The next day he went to work, the misbehaving class, for whatever reason, were respectful when he was teaching. Later, my teacher found out that class primarily had the kids of those Yakuza members he had met, and they were told to behave in his class. Story 7. I remember the story of a bikey gang clubhouse in a residential area. Two houses down, an elderly lady lived. As they were raised to respect their elders, they did handyman stuff for her. Motor lawns, fixed things around the house, that sort of thing. In return, she cooked them cakes and biscuits. One evening, a lowlife thought this was a good place to do a home invasion. The bikies heard her scream and four of them jumped the fence. One made her a cup of tea, one stood with her to make sure she was okay, another called the cops, and finally the last one had grabbed this thug, frog-marched him outside, and threw him to the ground. With a knee to the thug's back, he was warned, you move, you die. When the cops arrived, they shook hand with the bikies, thanked them for the easy arrest, and left. Story 8. Back in the 90s, my grandma lived in a small town full of gossip near the border. The hells were very present. Nearly no crimes committed, but it was their territory. People feared them. My grandma was at the hair salon. The hell's angels parked in front of it to head to the bar next to it. 
My grandmother had to zigzag through the bikes to get out and was sweating bullets the entire time. The gang saw her, and they all clapped when she succeeded. She didn't really want to scratch the bikes. Now the hells will swerve out of the way and form two columns to let her pass. The gossip was real fire this year. The kind lady from the suburbs got the Hells Angels to respect her. Boy, it was interesting to hear those stories. I was really hoping that this was going to be the story of how your grandma joined the Hells Angels or something. Like, what an amazing story that would be. This is still a great story and put a huge smile on my face, but come on, folks. I need the story of, like, an old lady who was just so sweet to bikers that she, like, became one of the bikers and got a roar and hog and everything. I want to think of, like, a little 90-year-old lady riding around with some, like, handlebars up here just like, yeah! Vroom, vroom. Story 9. I got spiked in a gay bar once, ran out because I noticed the powder on the rim of my drink, and it hit me as I got outside. I was in Japan and wasn't being careful. I managed to collapse by the curb and was convinced some bad stuff was about to happen to me. However, the local Yakuza guy managed to get me up, get a taxi for me, and I'm fairly certain he gave me some very choice words about watching my drink. Also, not to go back there in future. Managed to get back to my room and slept off whatever was in my system with only moderate vomiting. In hindsight, I should have found a pharmacist, but could have been a whole lot worse if not for in-real-life Kiryu. Story 10. I had an aunt in Michigan who sadly died due to a driver on their phone. At the funeral, about 200 to 400 bikers from all over the country rode in a massive convoy to come to her funeral. They then escorted the hearse to the burial site, all of them wearing green bandanas. My aunt always wore a green bandana. She was an adopted mother to several children and was a hairstylist, but she was as big and bad as any other biker. The amount of respect a lot of bikers have is insane. My grandparents biked as well. My grandpa used to have a gold wing. The biking community is absolutely amazing. Story 11. One of the key differences between street gangs and biker clubs is that clubs mostly just want to be left alone and do what they want, while gangs want to be recognized power in an area. Gangs use fear and violence both as recruiting tactics and to maintain control. Clubs use violence to protect their members, but otherwise try to stay out of local disputes. Sure, there are good and bad people everywhere, but overall, gangs and clubs interact with their communities differently. Note that I'm talking about modern clubs and gangs. Biker activity 50 years ago was different. I mean, some of this just kind of seems like semantics, and like I said, you've got to judge every group of people individually. Just because someone is in a motorcycle club or biker gang doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like, like I said, my experience with motorcycle clubs has been extremely positive, and I've heard many other stories, including some that we've read here and in the original video, of motorcycle clubs that were amazing. But any group of people is only as good as the individuals within it, and some of them might be bad. Same with other gangs and stuff, you know. So do use caution with all this stuff. Please don't take this video as me saying, go and go and have fun with gangs. They're great. Be careful and protect yourself. But just, you know, let's take a moment before we judge people. Story 12. I remember running out of gas in my car while in a bad part of town and having no choice but to walk to the nearest gas station that was literally the next street over. I was headed there while driving. Some members of the local gang approached me because I was completely alone and looking pathetic. They were actually really nice and offered me some company during my walk to make sure I was safe. I got my gas and they walked back with me. Once I got to my car, all three of them shot me in the chest 27 times. I'm so grateful. Story 13. I don't remember the name of the biker gang, but I do remember hearing about a gang that has been helping out abused children by protecting them from their abusers and staying with them in court to make them feel comfortable. I like the thought of seeing these massive dudes picking up anyone crappy enough to harm a child and curb stomping them for what they did. I think this is why there's a special section for people who do terrible things to kids. There are some crimes that even most criminals are willing to make someone kiss their own butt the hard way if they're involved in something like that. Story 14. I went to junior high in Southern California, and there was a large gang presence at my school. I'm a little person and was being bullied by a guy in my music class. One day at lunch, he was talking crap to me and trying to take my food, F you, Dave. Three rather beefy Latina girls surrounded him and threatened to pound the crap out of him if he kept it up. 
He looked like he was ready to pee himself. Those bad butt ladies were awesome to help my tiny white self. Thanks, Rosa and friends. Story 15. I was walking to the corner store when this creepy old guy came up behind me. He started talking to me, making offers, and trying to get me to go somewhere alone with him. Suddenly, four gang members walked across the street, took up a four-corner position around the guy, and motioned for me to walk away. They stopped the guy, and I was able to get to the store and get the money orders for my rent made. Story 16. Not me, but my grandma, who was a nurse and worked at a hospital right in the middle of a disputed zone of a gang war. As long as people went home in their hospital attire, no one would touch them, and they would even sometimes get members warning them if things were going down. This is probably more practical than nice. If you kill nurses, they can't help you when you're bleeding out. But she was totally calm walking home, which is amazing. We keep getting so close to grandma biker stories. Stories that could end up with grandmas becoming bikers. Oh, what if we had a story about a biker gang of grandmas? I, I want this story. Please, please, folks. If you're going to share your stories, if your grandmas, if you had a biker game of grandmas, game, grandma biker games, please, please, I need it. I, I, my mind is breaking because it's such a great concept. We got to make a movie. Story 17. I have this gang that I created in middle school, and we tend to hang out with each other after school at the skate park. Well, since some of us are in band, the other three that weren't, there were nine of us, were at the game. Well, a kid was being bullied, and a kid slammed the other kid's fries down after paying the only money he had. Some of us bought him a full meal, and two of us stayed and chatted with him while the others yelled at him and insulted him countless times. Story 18. A local biker gang called Koba, I believe, had come to the cigarette shop across from where we lived and had a fundraiser to pay for a little girl's treatment. She had brain cancer and her mother apparently couldn't afford it, so they raised $5,000 for her. This happened about a year ago, and I heard that she made it through treatment and is living her life happily. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.